I open the front door and its weight drags me forward as I stumble inside. I prop myself up on the knob, trying to catch my breath. I can't. Tara must have heard the door because her footsteps come booming down the stairs. She doesn't fall. I'm surprised, given that the last five times she ended up slamming into the wall. I keep telling her to be careful. This time I'm glad she isn't. Closing the door behind me, I finally manage to enter the kitchen as she rounds the corner. Holy shit, you're okay. I thought, when you didn't come back home, I... I'm okay. Don't worry. It wasn't anything. I can't seem to finish my sentence. My head is swimming. I stumble again, ready to collapse to the floor. Let's go upstairs. You need some rest. Come on. Her voice is warm, quiet, and reassuring. I can't believe it belongs to the same girl that spends her days yelling about the Loch Ness Monster. But it's what I need right now. Thank you, Tara. Hey, that's what I'm here for. We're the dream team, remember? She flashes me a now very familiar, wide-mouthed, goofy grin. I can tell she's trying to distract me from the fear and worry I can see in her eyes. She's never been hard to read, but by now she's an open book. But at least she's trying. That counts. Come on, let's get up there. Tara holds my arm to steady me as we go up the stairs. I hate being like this. I'm not supposed to be weak. I can't be weak. I ignore the shaking in my legs and force myself to stand on my own. Even if I'm just walking to the bed to sit down, it helps. You just sit here for a minute and relax, okay? I'll go make some coffee or something. I thought you didn't even know how to make coffee. That's where the or something comes in? It takes me a second to realize that I'm laughing. Everything's gone wrong, but I'm laughing. Every time I start to lose hope, she makes me laugh. She's smiling again. It's genuine this time. I guess I'll take the risk. Thank you, Tara. I'm not good with words. I want to kiss her, to thank her genuinely. It's not the right time. I kiss her cheek instead. Tara hesitates, staring at me blankly. For once, she doesn't go crimson, and instead her eyebrows knit together into a look of worry once more. She doesn't say anything, just turns and heads for the kitchen. Maybe that was a mistake, but I don't think it was. A whirlpool of panic hits my brain the instant she leaves. It threatens to overcome me, crashing over my thoughts and pulling me deeper into the abyss. My breathing runs ragged. I close my eyes, counting to 100 as I've done so many times before. But it's not enough. The forest. Addie. Evelyn. Tara. I try to raise my head above the water. I can't do this. After everything, with Maddie, with Evelyn, Tara shouldn't have to deal with my problems too. And neither of us has time to deal with the feelings I know we're not talking about. If I'm a bigger part of the picture than Maddie, I know what that's going to lead to. I'll hold it in. I'll be fine. I shake my head. It's so much harder to lie to myself than it used to be. Those heavy footsteps save me from the mess in my head. Tara slips back into the room with two mugs of, of what I th think is supposed to be coffee. The smell of coffee always makes me feel calm, but right now it just makes me feel sick. Here we go. If the caffeine in this doesn't wake you up, then at least the taste will. As long as it doesn't kill me. No promises. I bring the mug to my lips and taste it carefully. It's not bad. Or I'm just desperate. Either way, I keep drinking it. So, uh, what happened out there? Did she hurt you? Not really. She just went on about how we can't do anything to her, 
It wasn't anything serious. Bullshit. I want to tell her not to worry, but I can't. Evelyn's laughter rattles around in my head the second I open my mouth. I place the already empty mug of coffee on my desk. I hear Tara's sharp intake of breath behind me as I spin around, my heart racing. Fear and worry reflect in her eyes, and as her gaze flits between my face and my hand, I look down at my own palm still bleeding gently. It throbs now that I'm looking at it. With everything that happened, I forgot about it. Tara reaches forward and holds my hand between her own, applying a gentle pressure to it. Her concern is more than I can handle. I can't lie to her. I'm sorry, Tara. We've got so much to worry about. I didn't want to give you more. I want to look out for you, Morgan. I can take it. The two of us sit silently for what feels like an eternity. Every sentence I try to form falls apart the moment I open my mouth. The screaming echoes in my head. But eventually, I do it. And then, I couldn't stop. I... I was killing it. Tara rubs my hands, staying quiet as I continue talking. I feel my eyes stinging the more I speak, but I have to hold it together. It was burning. It was burning and dying. It was like the entire forest felt it. I couldn't stop the magic no matter what I did. And after everything was said and done, Evelyn, she... I feel a tightness in my chest. I've never spoken like this before to anyone. Not even to Gail Jura. She told me my real mother was just like me. I can't bring myself to continue. Voicing the implications out loud would make them more real than they already are. My real mother is gone, and whatever similarities we bore mean nothing now. All that matters is that she's lost. Shit, Morgan, I... The stinging's getting worse. She probably doesn't know how much we know. If she's trying to scare you, that means she's really scared of us. Her pulling weird shit in the forest isn't gonna change anything. She can't understand. How do I tell her about the screams of the forest? That black fire? The trees were... I cut myself off. What am I doing? I already told myself I wasn't going to let this get to me. And here I am, already about to lose it. I have to keep it together. You're right. Sorry. I shouldn't have made a big deal about it. Hey, that's not what I meant. You want to hear what I have to say? She sits down next to me. The stinging in my eyes isn't going away, no matter how many times I try to blink it back. You know I'm not the best at, like, saying stuff? Or knowing how to say stuff? Isn't that your job? Yeah, but do I ever look like I know what I'm doing? She holds my hand as I chuckle. You've got a point. But I'm okay, I promise. It was just some cheap scare tactics. I wouldn't let something like that beat me. Like you said, this is just a sign that we're on the right track. Just because everyone else before us failed, that doesn't mean that... Morgan. Huh? You're crying. What? No, I'm not. Inch by inch, I reach up and touch my cheek. It's wet. I can't be crying. My eyes are still stinging. I've been holding it back. It's okay. You can cry. I told you. I'm not... My voice cuts off as I let out a choked sob. I'm not... I can't hold it back any longer. I let go. Tears flow down my face for the first time in years. 
Each one burns my skin like a tiny, painful reminder of how pathetic I'm being. I... I... I desperately try to wipe the tears away, even though I know it's pointless. They just keep coming back. I squeeze my eyes shut instead, in hopes that it'll somehow force the tears back in. And then, once again, I feel Tara's arms around me. She squeezes me so hard that I start thinking she's trying to wring the tears out of me. Let it out. You know I've got you. I let it out. I throw my arms around her and rest my head against my shoulder. All I can do is hope that the fabric muffles my sobs. She rubs my back slowly and presses her lips to my forehead. I already feel like I'm burning inside. But her warmth is different. Soothing. My whole body shakes against Tara. She doesn't flinch. She doesn't say anything. She just holds me close. This isn't the girl I spent years watching yell about monsters on the internet. This isn't even the girl that stepped off the train a few weeks ago. Something about being here changed her. As I cling to her for dear life, I realize that it changed me too. I can feel my tears start to slow when that thought crosses my mind. I'm finally able to catch my breath. Tara's grip on me loosens as I stop shaking. When she takes her lips off my forehead, I have to fight the urge to pull her back down. I pull away and sit up instead. It's nice to be able to wipe my cheeks and actually have them stay dry. Looking at her now, I can see that Tara's face is stained with tears too. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Hey, it's cool. I don't think anyone on Earth or anywhere else would say you don't deserve a minute to get it all out there. If you say so. For what it's worth, I think you stand a way better chance than any of the people that came before you. After all, you've got one thing they don't. What's that? She breaks into another massive grin that the tear streaks on her face can't hope to tarnish. I know what she's going to say before she even brings out the finger guns. Me, obviously. I start to chuckle before bursting into laughter. Real, full laughter. Every now and then a sob slips in. I don't mind as much anymore. As always. She knew how to make me feel better. My incredibly humble savior. Hey, if I can't stay on brand even under the threat of death, I don't deserve to be popular. I love that about you. I clamp my mouth shut the instant the words leave it. I don't know where that came from. Tara's expression makes it clear she doesn't either. Uh, thanks. Y yeah. Yeah, no problem. We look away from each other. I do my best to focus on anything in the room that will hold my attention. Hey, uh... Can I say something? When I look back up at her, I can see that her entire face is bright red. As much as I love to joke, I'm 100% serious about you having something that they didn't have. More than one thing, actually. What are you talking about? I mean, you're really brave. Like, the bravest person I've ever met. You're smart, too. A hell of a lot smarter than I am. You're... She scrunches up her face in that cute way she always does when she's trying to figure out what to say next. Which means I've seen a lot of it. You're all the things that I act like I am. You're smart, you're brave, you're strong. You're not afraid to fight back against bullshit. You're beautiful. You're capable. You've been through a ton of bad shit all your life, and you're still fighting. Even against things nobody else out there believes. I spend nearly every day of my life thinking about the strangest thing in the world, and I still couldn't have imagined someone like you really existing. If I hadn't watched her ramble for years, 
that I'm sure that by now she'd be incomprehensible. But I can hear every word, and I can feel my heart beating faster with each one. And you're just really awesome and fun to be around, and being here with you is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I don't want this to end, and I'm... You're in love with me. I'm in love with you. Wait, did I just... And she... We both sit in stunned silence. I try to tell myself that I don't know where that comes from. Another lie. I've known for a while now. Just like I know that I... Look, I'm really sorry. I know we agreed from the start that we wouldn't catch feelings. I swear I've never had this happen before. She's a mess. But she's a mess I'm in love with. I get if you're upset, and I'm sorry for bringing this up now while we've got all this other shit going on. This is all over, I can just leave and I won't make a big deal about any of it and we can just go back to our own separate lives. I grab her cheeks and pull her face towards mine before she even realizes I've moved. I bring our lips together hard and kiss her in a way I never have before. I don't know how to describe it. I just know it's something new. We've kissed plenty of times, but this isn't like any of those. It isn't like any kiss I've ever had with anyone. It's healing. It's grounding. It's incredible. It only takes a second before she kisses back hard. She grabs me again and I can feel her hands moving along the length of my body. It's like she's looking for handholds. I realize in the back of my mind that this is the first time we've had a kiss this deep without one of us putting their tongue in the other one's mouth. I'd laugh if I didn't have more important things to do with my mouth. This is too good to let it end so soon. One of us is crying. It had better not be me. We break to gasp for air. I love you too, obviously. Tara plants smaller kisses on my bottom lip as I speak. Yeah, I kind of figured. Saying it out loud feels incredible. It's like dropping weights I've been carrying for miles. I can feel everything Evelyn took from me coming back in force. I guess I really do have you after all. With an air of finality, we break apart but remain close. Tara presses her forehead to mine and nuzzles my nose. Her fiery eyes, a full-on grin. Her face is framed by red hair and red cheeks. Cute. I'm not going to let her hurt you, I promise. I know. We're gonna beat this thing, Morgan. We're gonna kick Evelyn's ass, and we're gonna save my best friend. And when we leave this shitty village behind for good, I want you to come with us. Yeah, of course. I'm still not able to match her level of confidence. I love her, but that doesn't magically guarantee things will be okay. I'll keep trying to get there, though. So, uh... What does this make us? What do you mean? Are we, like, dating, or...? She rubs the back of her neck and smiles awkwardly. I mean, it's been a while since I've done something like this, and this isn't exactly a normal dating scenario. I know what she's trying to say. We don't know what's around the corner yet. I... don't know. Not that it's anything against you, of course. I love you a lot. I don't doubt that for a second. But I don't know if I can put a name on that love right now. Not with everything else we're dealing with. And here I always thought fighting an ancient evil monster would be the perfect setting for asking someone out. She doesn't sound mad. That's a good sign. Maybe, if everything turns out okay, we could give it a shot. Putting a name on it, I mean. 
She cranes her neck up towards me and kisses my cheek. Saving it for after we kick some ass, huh? I can dig it. So what does that make us for right now, I mean? Can we just be people who love each other? Stay friends the way we are right now? But in love? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can do that. I do have one question, though. Shoo. Can we kiss more often now? That works for me. I already know she's about to kiss me, but I beat her there. My lips meet hers on the way up. Her squeak of surprise melts away as we hold each other. I'm still afraid. I'm still uncertain. But this helps. She helps. Thank you, Tara. For everything. 